confession time. I've been hitting reload a lot on my podcast host's website today. Right when I got up, after my workout, before I logged in at the office, and even during my coffee break. Then it happened. With 14 hours to spare, July 2023 became the first thousand download month of the Kind Leadership Challenge. This is by far the best performing podcast not related to a 60s boy band that I've ever been involved with. And I want to share the kind leadership lessons I've learned along the way. Welcome to the Kind Leadership Challenge, where every Monday morning I teach you to heal your school or library in the next 10 minutes. I'm Dr. Sarah Clark, founder of the Kind Leadership Guild, where I use my PhD in higher ed leadership and nearly two decades of experience at academic libraries to advise educational and library leaders who want to build a better world without burning out. Kind leaders make the tough decisions without becoming jerks. We create effective systems that help us get the job done with less money and effort. And we've learned that once we stop controlling and start collaborating, any vision becomes possible. To be clear, kind leadership's pretty simple, but it's rarely easy. So if you're up for a challenge, stick around to learn how to create a legacy that will strengthen your community long after you're gone. So, after doing a little happy dance, I began to ponder. How did the Kind Leadership Challenge go from a best-kept secret to a, well, less best-kept secret? And were there any leadership takeaways for my listeners? I mean, I suspect most of you don't have podcasts, but most of you probably are working towards ambitious long-term goals that seem a bit intimidating, if not just impossible. Then it struck me that the process I used to grow the Kind Leadership Challenge actually followed the three skills of kind leadership, growing humanely, managing effectively, and creating collaboratively. Growing humanely, as regular listeners know, is the skill of connecting with yourself and your core values so you can decide on goals that will get you closer to your vision of a better world. And if I may speak frankly, it's actually kind of hard to stay connected to your own voice and values as a podcaster. As I started thinking about launching the Kind Leadership Challenge, I kept running into expert after expert, each with a different tip or tactic for growing your podcast. So I listened and researched and asked myself how I felt about the whole thing, at which point I decided to ignore about uh, 70% of the advice I'd run into. You see, one of the core values I gained from the experiences I described back in episode zero, the the ones that inspired the Kind Leadership Guild and by extension, the Kind Leadership Challenge, was that I would never let myself burn out again. So I needed to design a podcast that would be sustainable with my work, my trial and mostly error attempts to build a part-time coaching business, and the rest of my life. But another value I'd learned from those days, as well as similar struggles in my life, is that connection with others is how we heal, as people, as organizations, and as communities. So I decided on my goal. My podcast would share the lessons I've learned from theory, research, and most importantly, the daily practice of leadership so that other leaders can make better choices with both the confidence gained from my experience and the comfort that they're not alone in their struggles. And I would do it in a way that also allowed me to build a better world without burning out. Okay, so the kind leadership skill of growing humanely helped me decide what to do. But how would I actually do it? That's where the skill of managing effectively would come in. That meant using the knowledge I'd gathered and the resources at my disposal to create a show and a marketing plan that would empower me to find the maximum number of kind leaders with the minimum amount of time. I picked a few new ideas from the podcast thinkers I'd come across, but mostly I drew on the almost a decade I'd spent as a podcaster already, and the even longer time I have been a instruction and reference librarian. I knew well what kinds of podcast formats were fast to record and edit, and which ones are time sucks. 
I knew that my years of teaching and public speaking had made me a pretty good solo podcaster, especially if I had an outline or even better for SEO, a script. As for resources, I have a lot less time on my hands than your average 20-something hustle-hard wannabe influencer. But I did have a little seed money that I could strategically throw at a bit of training and marketing, as well as a few time-saving apps and services like a social media scheduler, and later, a podcast editing service. So by understanding what I had and didn't have, I was able to create a plan that would make it more likely that the Kind Leadership Challenge would achieve the goals I had already decided on. Of course, the Kind Leadership Challenge can only empower leaders to build a better world if those leaders listen to it, learn from it, implement it, and then tell your colleagues. And that leads us into the third Kind Leadership skill of creating collaboratively. That skill requires building a culture among your team that fosters your goals recruiting stakeholders to help you scale your impact, and working together to enlarge your goals and plans into a collective vision for the change your community wishes to see your library or school make in the world. Now, as a solo podcaster, I don't really lead a team, but I did have some prior clients from some small group programs I ran during the early part of the pandemic. They, as well as volunteers from the Kind Leadership Challenge Facebook group, became my beta listeners and gave me feedback to refine the show. Then I launched the podcast and set out to spread the word. I had a decent following on Facebook, but it wasn't really growing. Then, with the advice of a fellow leadership blogger, I tried LinkedIn with much more success in finding new listeners. My downloads grew slowly, but mostly surely, which inspired me to keep putting out new shows and refine my work, which led to more listeners, and the virtuous cycle continued. I began to learn what topics you care about and which episodes make you hit skip. I asked questions on the socials and you answered. I played with polls, experimented with live streams, tried a few different coaching formats, and kept refining the vision for the Kind Leadership Challenge and the Kind Leadership Guild with your feedback. And as reassuring as my download record this month has been, I also feel like I'm on the verge of understanding how I can best build a community of practice where we can all teach each other how to build the schools and libraries our broken world needs. And that's how a tiny little show about the seemingly oxymoronic concept of kind leadership broke a podcast record I never really expected to hit. Give it a shot with your next project. You might be surprised too. Now, here's your challenge for this week, as I challenge myself to get a little more assertive about asking for help to grow this movement. If you have ever found an episode of this show useful, and especially if you're one of the many people who's been binging my entire back catalog lately, tell a friend and send them a link to the show. You can either send them to this episode, which is kindleadershipchallenge.com slash 79, or another favorite episode. And if you want your colleague to get a truly warm welcome to the world of kind leadership, either message me on LinkedIn or email me at sarah at kindleadershipguild.com to tell me who you told so I can welcome them aboard. It took me 78 episodes to get to 1,000 downloads in a month, and I'd like my first 2,000 download months to come a lot faster. That's not because of ego, okay, at least not mostly because of ego, but because that download stat is a hard figure that proves that all of you find kind leadership as useful as I hoped you would. My vision, my hope, is that these 10-minute weekly lessons give you new skills and mindsets around your leadership practice so that you can more efficiently and effectively fulfill your vision for yourself, your organization, and the world around you. And if this podcast does help you do that, then the best thing you can do to build a better world is to share this show with a colleague. Thanks, as always, for listening to the Kind Leadership Challenge and for growing humanely, managing effectively, and creating collaboratively in your own organization. 
never doubt that day by day you're building a better world, even if you can't see it yet. So until next time, stay kind now. Oh, one last thing. If you're ready to take on this week's challenge, but not sure how to start, head over to kindleadershipchallenge.com slash next to download the Next Steps Checklist.